afraid of, excited about what's going on. Took a call yesterday from a guy who was wondering about if I sold my house now, how would I get into another home? And how do interest rates affect that? That's the biggest question right now. With interest rates rising, people can now not afford as much. Or if they do, it just costs them more in interest. Right. So but we still don't have a ton of inventory. Yep. That's so, the biggest thing. So the root of this question is 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 the question of, of a low inventory seller's market, which we've been experiencing for a long, long time. It's been at its extreme heights um, since COVID hit. It was starting to taper a little bit right before COVID. It was still an extreme seller's market, but it was starting to kind of, the intensity was starting to slow a little bit. And of course it's gone to the moon since then. And then we have these predictions late 2021 that 2022 would still be good, but not as crazy as 2021. And now the Q1 2022, the first quarter of 22 data is coming out even crazier than any point last year. So like 8% year over year growth in just the first quarter, which is bananas. So getting a lot of people asking, is this a bubble? Yeah. So my answer to that would be no, but um, no, but now it's a clear no period. So it's not a bubble, but the reason people are saying bubble is because when you see things acting in a way that don't seem natural, that don't seem part of traditional cycles, people tend to say, oh, it's a bubble. It's gotten out of hand. What's actually happening is the fundamentals of the market are logical. They're not fun, they're not normal, but they're logical. And what I mean by that is <coughs> economics are fairly simple at the basic core. When there's a low supply of something and a high demand for it, price goes up. Gasoline right now, oil um, is, an, is an example of that, right? So when, when the conflict in Russia, Ukraine happened, people immediately started saying, well, what do those regions supply to the rest of the world? Because they're not gonna supply it for a while due to sanctions or war or whatever you want to call it, but certain countries are saying, we're not going to let you ship your stuff anymore. Okay, well, then there's less of that stuff, so the price of that stuff goes up. That's just supply and demand. Well, there is still a very, very low supply of available housing in North Texas, available being the key word. There's still a ton of houses here, but people aren't making them available for sale because of this question. If I don't know where to buy, if I can't afford as much, then I'm not going to sell my house. And that's what I want people to know. The fundamentals of the market are basically the same they've been for the last you know decade. And they're just as extreme as they were last year. But the reasons have move around a little bit. Some of the reasons are because we can't build houses fast enough. Now we're building houses faster than we have in a while. We're beginning to close the gap to catch up. We have not yet caught up. We're still losing ground, but we're getting closer to catching up. But the point I wanna make is if everyone all at the same time said, okay, let's all try to sell and buy, there would be a lot more houses to choose from because we'd all be putting them on the market and, and we could buy each other's houses and there'd be some efficiencies. That's not gonna happen though. So because so many people are on the fence with a question like that question, the market's gonna continue to act the way the market's continue to act. And because of interest rates and lower buying power, a lot of people have just moved down the ladder one rung. Hey, I was looking for a $650,000 house, now I'm looking 585. Same income, same monthly payment I can afford, that's just gonna get me less house. Now, if you have cash, the market hasn't moved away from you quite as quickly. Values are still going up rapidly, but you haven't lost that financial leverage with interest rates quite as quickly as some others. I'm gonna start tracking kind of week over week in certain cities. What do we have inventory-wise? I looked in, I looked on Thursday of this past week. Yep. I live in Collin County, I was looking in Plano. And uh, under four hundred thousand, uh, under four hundred thousand dollars, houses that were active on the market, not under contract, and so not including ones that were under contract, we had twelve. Twelve under houses available in the most competitive price point in a community of three hundred and fifty thousand people. Yeah, under five hundred thousand, we had thirty-two. Okay, so put those together, and you've got like less than fifty houses. Yeah, forty-four houses in a city of three hundred and fifty thousand people under half a million dollars. Just completely insane. I mean, literally think about that because people are still moving to Plano from all over the country. Jobs and opportunity and relative cost of living is still attractive. Although if you've lived here for a while, you're like, it's gone crazy. But relative to much of the country still, 
those are still attractive numbers. We're, we're looking around going, there are literally is nothing to choose from. I was, I was looking this up because I was on a, uh, a coaching consulting call with uh, one of our uh, coaching clients that's in Las Vegas. A real estate agent in Las Vegas. Yeah, in Las Vegas. And uh, she was asking me like, what's, what's real numbers like for you right now? Because this is what I'm seeing here in Vegas. Like what's happening for you right now? And I showed her those, that data. Yeah. And she was like, she almost fell out of a chair. She was yeah. like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. no, it's the, nothing like that. Because the they're seeing a little bit of an up, upturn. Well, so we're going to get there in a second too, because we got lots of questions this week on, is the market changing? You know, is the bubble busting? There's no bubble, but that's what they're asking. And other questions like that. So we will get there in a second with Andrew, because he's got some commentary and, and, and some uh, client prospect questions. But I want to make a sidebar comment, because you were talking about one of our coaching clients, an agent in Las Vegas. We coach and consult with real estate agents all over North America. At any point, if you, a friend or a family member are moving to or moving from California, Las Vegas, Arizona, any other place in North America, you can call us and we will help you find an agent in that community. It is very difficult to find a great agent. We know that. There's almost 2 million professional real estate salespeople in North America. Professional being a generous term. Do we go with licensed? Licensed. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and it's very difficult to find a full-time, world-class, fully committed, dedicated real estate professional with, with a team or, or a group of professionals around them. So if you're looking in another part of the country or if you have a family member moving to this area from that area or from this area to one of those areas, you can always call 214-310-0008. And we can help you find an honest, ethical, world-class person in that market. And uh, you don't have to go through the burden of sifting and sorting through the maybes and the online stuff or recommendation or just calling off a sign. Just call us anytime. Save this phone number in your cell phone, 214-310-0008. 214-310-0008. Or as my son says, touchreminderteam.com. 